bumpy start there, but uh, we got there in the end. Welcome, it is our Thursday Q&A live here at Digital DJ Tips, where you've got me, Phil, helping you with all your DJ queries, issues, questions, problems, challenges for the next 40, 45 minutes or so. Uh, and uh, well, we're really looking forward to it today because as ever, there's a lot going on in DJing, there's a lot to talk about, and uh, we've got the little pioneer DJ, um, all my cameras have gone off as well. I don't know, it's just not my day today. Uh, we've, got, we've got the little, we did have the little Newmark uh, um, mix track controller set up and I've just realized the reason that everything cut to me was that all my uh, camera sources went off. Uh, so that's something I've got to sort out for the next time, isn't it? I'm making a note now. Camera sources, what the F? I've got written down on there. We will get that sorted out for next time. That's the first time that's gone wrong in literally years. So we've got to count our blessings there. Anyway, the main camera's working, that's the important thing. Uh, so welcome, people. It is Thursday Q&A Live with me, Phil Morse. We're here to help you with all your DJ questions, all your problems and queries. So all I ask is that you put hashtag ASK, hashtag ask, if you want to ask a question, because we're very, very busy on here and lots and lots of people telling me there's no sound, obviously we fixed that, but the comments come by really quickly. So if you want to ask a question, uh, then that is the place to do it with the hashtag ask and then I'll see them. Facebook is always better. Hello Jonas, first time here. And the reason Facebook is always better is that it gives us um, the chance to get to your questions afterwards in the feed if we don't get to answer them live because on YouTube and on Twitch, they disappear. So best place to ask questions, best place to be with us on Tuesdays and Thursdays anyway is in the questions. Right, we had a bit of a bumpy start, so we're just gonna forget everything else and get straight into the questions. Now, the first thing I do want to point out though is if you enjoy this, do that, come and join Digital DJ Tips. Go to digitaldjtips.com slash join uh, and you get the free book, the free gear guide, all the stuff we give everyone who becomes a member of our community, but more importantly, you get our weekly Tuesday tips email, which is the best way to improve your DJing because it's packed with free DJ lessons and tutorials and reviews and all that kind of stuff. So do come and join us if you're not already a member, digitaldjtips.com slash join. Uh, and I've got a great course offer to tell you about at the end as well. So hang around for that. Right, hurry up, says Robert. The pub's open at four, four o'clock UK. <laughs> Well, Robert, that probably says more about you than it does about me, but there we go, thank you for that. Christian says, good day, everybody. Uh, I got so excited with the news about the CDJ3000 and Serato. Yeah, this is the news that Serato uh, now works with the Pioneer DJ uh, CDJ 3000 uh, units. So, you know, if you're a pro DJ, that's a big deal because it means you can turn up with your laptop, plug into the modern CDJ 3000 setup in a club and just DJ from it the way you could with the CDJ 2000s for many, many years, of course. So thanks for sharing that, Christian. Thank you, Jermaine. Uh, very, very good today. Right, Ray's question. How to determine the value cost per gig hour when first starting out in bars and clubs. I've been networking and picking the brains of other local DJs. Well, it's easy. Uh, you know, you're only worth what people are prepared to pay you. So the best thing to do is find out what other DJs are being paid in your area. You say you've been networking with them, so find that out. Uh, but also remember that you might think you're great, you might think you're the finished article, you might think that you've got this made, but you haven't because you only become the kind of DJ that really is good at what you do unless you, uh, once you play quite a few gigs, like we're talking hundreds, not dozens, in public. So the most important thing is to get those gigs under your belt. You should always charge money for your gigs. And the reason for this is it puts you in a different mindset than DJing free. If you're DJing free, then you are likely to always DJ for free, likely to always undersell your services, likely to always, you know, ask for money, but be ready to do it for expenses or whatever. But if you always charge something right from the very beginning, you will always value your time and your equipment and your money and your music uh, a little bit more than someone who doesn't. And here's the way to do it. We call it the dollar pitch. The dollar pitch is very simple. It could be a pound or euro, depending where you are. You tell anyone who offers you a gig, hey, you know, you don't know me, I don't know, um, you don't know me, you don't know what I can do. Here's the deal, I'll do it for a dollar. And if you like it, my usual fee is $200. So no, no obligation. Um, I'll turn up on Friday, play the gig, cost you a dollar. And if you want to carry on, well, we'll, uh, we'll talk about my availability for forthcoming gigs. And what you do there is you do get the chance to prove what you can do. And if you're as good as you think you are and you're worth that $200 or whatever it might be, uh, then, you know, this is taken as red. You've got, you've, got to, you've got to 
deliver. But assuming you do deliver, when the person who you played for basically nothing for uh, says to you, that was awesome, can I book you for next week? You say, yeah, okay, what time do you want me to turn up? Uh, and I'll, I'll hand you my invoice upon arrival. And they know it's going to be a $200 invoice. So you've already done your negotiating up front. It's a really nice way of getting paid uh, what you are worth or what you think you're worth uh, without the awkward conversations. But you've got to do the research first. So, you know, in some places the going rate might be $50 or so some places in Europe it might be 500 euros. In England it might be 100 pounds. Whatever it is, you've got to do that research first. So talk to other DJs and try the dollar pitch. Uh, it's a good way to get paid what you're worth. Uh, right, so hashtag ASK if you want to ask a question. Hello to Lou in sunny Florida. We're all doing very well, Lou, and we hope you're doing well uh, as well. Uh, Robert says hello from the Netherlands where autumn has started. Yeah, not quite autumn here yet, though it's getting a little bit more chilly in the evenings here in Gibraltar, I'll say that. Good morning, sunshine, says Michael. How's my friend from the other side of the world? Very good, Michael. I hope you're well too over there uh, in uh, in Chicago. Uh, right, so DJ Pac-Man, um, I want tips on getting a residency somewhere. Restaurant, bar, club, etc. Et the biggest tip I can give you on getting a residency is first get a gig in the venue you want to get a residency in. Show them what you can do uh, and then hopefully they'll like what they see and then you, uh, you'll get a residency at some point down the line, but they won't book you unless they've seen you DJ first. So a good thing to do is hire a venue for a private party. And if you do that, then you get a chance to prove what you can do. And I always tell the story of a, a beach bar I played in. Uh, we did a Halloween party there and I dressed in a Scooby-Doo outfit. Uh, and they, I don't know what that means, hello, Halloween wise. I guess they chased ghosts, didn't they, Scooby and Scrappy and the lot. Uh, but anyway, uh, they called me DJ Scooby for years after that. But what it did was allow them to see me DJing, but we had hired the venue. So it was to no risk at all from their point of view. And after that, um, they liked what I did and I got a residency there. So, um, you know, that's, uh, that's my advice. One of many pieces of advice I could give you. Uh, play privately in a venue and then talk to the management. Hopefully they liked what they saw. Uh, this is from um, Steve who says, Phil, other than trust your ears, are there any pointers you can offer for what to look for when searching for tracks that would mix or blend well together? So we have an article on Digital DJ Tips um, about fuzzy key mixing. So if you go to Google uh, and search for fuzzy key mixing, uh, the very top result you're going to see over there on Google uh, is this one. Fuzzy kicks key mixing, the easy new way to mix anything into anything. Uh, click on that uh, and you'll get to this article here. Now this shows you how to mix any track you want into any other track and most of the time in key and it'll work just fine and it'll sound just fine. Uh, this is kind of an advance on standard key mixing and it's uh, pretty much a, a revolution when it comes to this kind of stuff. Now it's something we've been doing and teaching here at Digital DJ Tips for many, many years, but it's finally been included in Pioneer DJ's equipment. Indeed, as of the CDJ 3000 that we were talking about a minute ago. Uh, and so this is really the way key mixing is going. And the wonderful thing about this is that it lets you DJ um, in a way which means that you don't have to worry about whether the next track will be in key or not. You know, because normally with key mixing, you have to find something that's in key. Uh, or you need to use the key sync button and the key sync button quite often just sounds terrible because it makes it really high or really low. This new method fixes that problem. And what this means is that you can pick any tune that you think might mix next and most of the time get it so it's gonna be a harmonic matching mix as well. It really frees you up to go where your, your instinct goes in your music collection while still having a chance of doing a really nice key mix. So if you haven't tried that yet, Steve, that's what I recommend. Go read the fuzzy key mixing article on Digital DJ Tips and have a go. See if that just gives you more ideas and gets you more kind of involved in the, the corners of your music collection that maybe you weren't involved with before. And if you haven't tried key mixing at all before, that is a good enough excuse to try it for sure. Uh, because it's kind of key mixing come of age. Um, so Rally, hello to you. How to back up your music if you don't have a USB on your controller? This is a difficult question because I'm not sure what you're asking here, uh, Rally. You know, your music is on your laptop if you're DJing with a controller. Uh, and the best way to back it up, frankly, is just drag it into a Dropbox or an iCloud or whatever and just have a backup online. That's a pretty good start. 
Uh, as far as not having a USB on your controller, not sure what you're asking there. Maybe you could go into a bit more detail on that. Uh, we're live today on YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook, by the way, but come to Facebook if you want to ask a question. I will, I've got all your questions from everywhere. Rally there, for instance, was on YouTube, but any I don't get to, we, we can get to them on Facebook in a way we can't on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, so this is um, Kyle, and I've got no idea what the answer to this question is, so if someone else can uh, respond, please do. Kyle on Facebook says, I'm wondering what the term soft knee means. I've got absolutely no idea. I'm gonna Google it as we speak and find out what it means. Um, Ah, I know what you're talking about now. You're talking about compression. Right, okay, yes, I do know what soft knee means. Right, so soft knee is easy. So soft knee is on a compressor, so a compressor is a thing that makes the loud parts of your track quieter and the quiet parts of your track louder in production. It makes everything sound louder, maybe at the expense of overall, you know, listening pleasure after a long time, because if everything's loud, you're gonna get tired in your ears. Uh, and soft knee simply means that the compressor kicks in slowly. So um, it just gives you a different effect if you like, say you're putting a compressor on your drums or something like that, uh, as opposed to one which kicks in very, very quickly. So that's what that means, it's a production term. Thank you for uh, Google for reminding me what that meant there. Um, William says, I love the video of Hype with the DDJ 400, uh, it's a brilliant, lesson of expertise and modesty. Oh, well, that's really cool. So some of you might not know uh, James Hype. James Hype is one of our tutors, but more importantly, he's one of the biggest uh, DJs in the world right now. Uh, James Hype has done a lesson, uh, which you can see, well, it's not really a lesson, it's just a, um, it's just him showing what he can do on a DDJ 400 controller. Uh, so uh, I'm looking for it here. Here it is on Digital DJ Tips at the moment. James Hype plays insane set on lowly Pioneer DDJ 400. You can get to this by going to digitaldjtips.com and finding that uh, thing I just clicked on there. Uh, and here it is. Uh, it's a YouTube, uh, a YouTube routine that Hype has done on the tiny little DDJ 400 controller, uh, and it's awesome. Uh, so do go and take a look at that if you're not sure who James Hype is or you haven't seen that routine. It just proves that it's all about the skills, not the DJ gear. Uh, but just as importantly, take a look at this because we've just put live for the next few days uh, the course we made with James Hype. Uh, we've lobbed $100 off the price, but more importantly, there is brand new training added because James Hype has recently had, get ready for this, five million views on his two routines online, which are just smashing it as of summer 2021. Uh, it's Roses versus uh, Robert Miles' Children. And he's also taken the acapella of um, Bad Habits by Ed Sheeran uh, and mashed it up with Insomnia by Faithless. And you really have got to see these things to believe them. I, like I say, five million plus views on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube for both of those routines. But most importantly for you, our students and our would-be students, he teaches them both. They're new lessons being added to James Hype's Mixing Skills course. James Hype's Mixing Skills course is probably doesn't need any, any introduction to you because it's something we've had on sale for about a year. But if you don't know what it's about, uh, it is all about teaching you how to DJ just like James Hype does. Uh, and this is the page that describes it on the website uh, where James talks you through in a video and also uh, in written form everything that's in this course. It teaches you how he sets his decks up, how he buys his music, how he thinks about music, how he approaches DJing sets and building routines. Uh, and then it talks you through all his basic skills that anyone can learn, uh, take, moves you on to intermediate, to DJ combos, to advanced combos, finally ends up in teaching you all his signature tricks, transitions and mashups. Works for anyone on any gear, uh, and it also works whatever your skill level. It's an awesome course. It's you know, one of our most popular courses, but it's now been completely updated with all this new material. So now is a great time to jump on board this course if you haven't got it. Um, so so go take a look at it. It's on the website right now. I'll also give you a little URL short code now that will show you uh, where to get to it. Just go there, djtips.co slash hype uh, to get to that course. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's on sale for $100 off right now, but not for very long. So don't be uh, too long if you're interested in it. Uh, but I'm glad you enjoyed that uh, video there, um, William. Uh, we enjoyed it too. We love, we love James. He's He's awesome. Right, so uh, so James says, will the 
Uh, I, I can't answer that question, James, so I won't put it on the screen, but um, it's on Facebook, so maybe someone will be able to. Uh, we've done the DJ Pac-Man one, uh, so now let's move on to, oh, there's a, the Ruckus, he's loving the fact that uh, the Serato update for the CDJ 3000s has come, uh, because you can, uh, you can now play on it, so that's cool. Uh, hello to Paul, who's just messaging for the first time. Welcome, Paul, good to have you here. Um, any chance of getting full record box software on the iPad in the future would be good, wouldn't it? I spoke to Pioneer DJ about their record box iPhone and iPad app, and they did say, you know, we're constantly developing it, uh, we're constantly working on it, uh, but they wouldn't give me any more details. That was only a couple of weeks ago I was talking to them about that. Uh, so uh, this is from Reza, who says, I had somebody ask me the other day, why would I hire a DJ when I can just use Spotify? Phil, how would you answer that question? I'd say, go ahead, then do it. Come back to me afterwards and tell me how it went. And I'd walk away from them. They're just trying to play you. They're just trying to get you to give them the, 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 the service at a very low fee. You know, if it's a friend or something who's genuinely asking it, you can say, well, Spotify, Spotify, Spotify doesn't know uh, the best new tunes. Spotify doesn't know what tunes everyone's loving in this town at the moment. Spotify can't look at the crowd and figure out who likes what. And Spotify can't keep them on the dance floor once it's got them there. Spotify is just a computer algorithm that sends the same music down the uh, internet to everyone who clicks play on that playlist. Up to you. If that's what you want, then do it. But, uh, you know, but I think you know, normally this is just people trying to play you for a better price. Um, so, William, should there be a difference? Oh, you're loving these gig questions. I guess gigs are coming back, aren't they? Should there be a difference in price per gig if there were streamed instead of physical presence? Also, how would you recommend a private stream, Skype, FaceTime, etc.? Well, yes, of course, if you're going to stream your services into someone's venue, then you are more like Spotify that we were just talking about than a real live DJ and you, you'll be paying an awful lot, paid an awful lot less for that. You know, the point of a DJ is to play the right music for the person in front of them right now. You can only do that by being there. Um, but, you know, there has been this virtual online gig thing and it's not even new. I remember in the, uh, the Millennium 2000, I remember a DJ friend of Steve, my um, co-owner here at Digital DJ, it's a good friend of Steve, the DJ Judge Jules, he played at uh, a venue in London, a venue in Birmingham and Manchester, three big cities in the UK at once. And he was only in one of them and the rest of it was sent down an ISDN line. Oh, how wonderful and modern. Back when we didn't have fibre and uh, broadband and all that, we had ISDN. Uh, he DJed in three venues at once, but it was gimmicky and I think it still is gimmicky. The DJ has to be there. Um, right, so um, David's ask a question. David, I've passed that on to Scott just to let you know. Um, so uh, he will be in touch with you. Uh, so Alex, uh, hello to you, Alex. Um, um, Rally actually has got a question here. Um, oh no, you're asking your question over and over again. Here's a little bit of etiquette for our wonderful, wonderful audience. Do not ask your questions more than once. Please, I have too many questions scrolling by here. If I see your question more than once, I will give you a yellow card, which means I won't answer your question this week. Do not ask questions more than once. Uh, if I can get to them, I will. If not, my team will afterwards. Uh, so this is from DJ Schoolie Hand. How do you maintain a residency without sounding the same every night and also avoiding burnout? Well, I'll answer one of these questions without sounding the same every night. Uh, so the reason that you don't want to sound the same every night is very weak in a residency. The reason you don't want to sound the same every night is so you don't bore the bar staff and yourself. But everyone else is fine with you sounding the same every night because they probably come out once a week, once a fortnight, three times a year, right? On that dance floor. So they don't care if you sound the same every night. Here is the way to approach it. You should change your music slowly in a residency. Let's say you play weekly. You should maybe put 10 new tunes in your box every week, and you'll probably end up pl playing five of them. Uh, and then the rest of the time, just pick music from the music that you normally play. The point about venues is people go because they know what they're gonna expect. They know what you play, they know what, what goes on there. And so to think that you've gotta play a completely new set of tunes every night, it's craziness. Listen to the way radio stations rotate their music. That's a good starting point. What I would say is though, playing the same tracks in the same order every night, that's different, and you certainly don't want to do that. So I always advise doing what Layback Luke suggests. Uh, and Layback Luke, again, one of our tutors, some, uh, some of you will know Luke from uh, his courses with us, but Layback Luke always uh, has what he calls the sandwich method of DJing. And Layback Luke's sandwich method of DJing states that if you find two records that go well together, great, 
never playing them together again. Instead, find another record that you think might go well with them and sandwich it in the middle. Now you've got three records that go well together. Which two went together the best? The first one and two or two and three? Right, that's your next mix. So next time, play those two together, but then don't do it again. Then put something else between them. So in other words, you're playing roughly the same music all the time, but you're looking for new transitions and new mixes. You're keeping it fun for yourself, fun for the bar staff and the people who work at the venue, uh, and you're also playing familiar music for the people who come to the venue. And you're also giving yourself a DJ challenge all the time to find new mixes and transitions. So, uh, you know, Layback Luke has been DJing for decades. He knows his stuff. And if Luke says that's the way to do it, that's the way to do it. So I would say to you, just add a few, few new tunes. Even if you add one new tune a day to your collection, that's enough. Uh, and then keep it familiar when you're playing residencies, but try and mix up the mixing, uh, as I just kind of mentioned, because that'll keep it fun for you and for the people who work there. Uh, by the way, if you uh, are interested in the, in the Layback Loop course, head over to the Digital DJ Tips website, click DJ Courses at the top, scroll down, you will see two courses we've made with Layback Loop. We've got a production course, Layback Loop's bootlegs, mashups and re-edits, which gets you started in production. And we've also got Layback Luke's Creative DJing, which is how to play big rooms, festivals, and that kind of, you know, Layback Luke style of mixing where you really are trying to make a big impact on your audiences. So go and have a look at those if you're interested in the way Luke produces and makes music. Okay, hashtag ask if you would like to ask a question today. I'm here for about another 20 minutes. Uh, and if you enjoy what you see, you can follow the channels, you can click share. We love all that stuff, but this is what I really want you to do. Go to djtips.com slash join, join up. We can then give you a copy of that book, which is the best-selling book on Amazon on how to DJ, and that gear guide, which will help you to pick the right DJ gear and avoid expensive mistakes. They're free when you join. It's free to join anyway, but the most important thing is we can then help you become a better DJ and better DJ producer by sending you our weekly Tuesday tips email. Okay, let's move on. Uh, the next live question, I'm going to take one from YouTube now. Um, so will you guys go over how to update the CDJ 3000? I just received mine this past weekend and I'm sure it didn't come Serato ready. Uh, okay, so the best way to uh, update your CDJ 3000, uh, you, need to get the, you need to get the firmware update from Pioneer DJ. Uh, and so the firmware update is a simple little thing you can get from the Pioneer DJ website. Uh, and then uh, using that, you, you, you put it on a USB drive uh, and you, um, stick it onto the uh stick it into the player and then you just follow the instructions so there is a little pdf about this i don't really know the easiest way of giving you guys a pdf well the answer is i can't uh what i what i might be able to do uh is um point you to it on the pioneer dj website so i'm just i've got i've got the instructions in front of me now it's just finding a way to show you um how to do that um i suggest possibly going to the pioneer website um and go to the, the download section and there will be the new firmware and there'll be a guide there. But basically, uh, you, um, you get a FAT32 USB, the same kind of USB you put your music on. Uh, you put the update on there, you put it into the player, uh, you press menu utility uh, and the utility screen comes up uh, and the firmware number shows there. Uh, and then you, um, from there you can upgrade it. It's all on their website, so go do it that way. Um, you might actually be looking at that now on the screen. I'm not sure. No, you're not. You're not looking at that now. I can't get it on the screen. I'd love to. But hey, I can't even get the cameras working today. So let's just keep it simple <laughs> just for this one. Uh, right. So um, let's put another question. Where should we go to now with questions? Um, let's, uh, I just want to do a bit of sorting here because it's now gone absolutely crazy. So I'm now only going hashtag ask, only going hashtag ASK. So if you didn't put that, I can't see your comment at the moment. Uh, so um, uh, my partner asked, what was the bit of equipment you had behind the Rock the Dance Floor book on Tuesday? What was the bit of equipment I had behind the Rock the Dance Floor book on Tuesday? Absolutely no idea. Sorry. I help you with that one. Um, this is from You Don't Like my, my Music. Have you had to deal with the club owner that tries to tell you what to play? What's the etiquette? Oh yeah, we've all been there. Uh, look, you should talk about this before you go on the decks. Uh, and uh, you should say, you know, what are we playing tonight? What's going on? It's up to you whether you listen to them. Uh, but, you know, normally if you're having that conversation mid-set, you've got a bit of a problem. So really try and have that conversation before you go behind the decks. You know, if it's your first gig with them, then 
well, maybe listen to them, maybe try playing different stuff and have a chat about what worked and what didn't afterwards. It all depends on the respect you've got for the club owner, whether the club owner really knows music, knows what their audience likes, in which case they could be helping you, or whether they just, you know, one of their highest spending punters has said, oh, this new DJ is rubbish, we should be playing some classic rock. And they've come over to you and said, will you play some classic rock or what? You know, it just depends, it's hard to say. But really, this is the kind of conversation that you want to have beforehand and not when, uh, not when you're in the middle of your set. So Gerald says, hi, Phil, great show every week. Well, thank you, Gerald. I have a question. The audio output of my DDJ 400 is quite weak because the unit is USB powered. If I use the DDJ 800 that has external power, will the audio output be stronger? Yes, it will. So this is all about the fact that DJ controllers, and I'll have to go and grab the DJ controller over here now, I can't flip to my camera because all my cameras have gone. The cameras have thrown a wobbly today. So here's the DJ controller we had set up in the studio today that I was showing you uh, <laughs> on the screen earlier on. Uh, it's the little, pie, the little sorry, Newmark uh, Mix Track uh, Platinum FX. This is a wonderful controller, but got no power supply on the back. It takes all its power from the USB that plugs into your computer. And that means that the power, the little two amp, five volt, or whatever it is, power that comes down that USB into here, has to power everything you see on there. Has to power all the lights, all the displays in the middle of the unit. Uh, it has to power the output, has to power the headphones. And what this means is there's only so much power to go around, and so somebody's got to give. So Controllers that plug into your laptop and don't have a separate power supply tend to have dimmer LEDs. So in other words, when you are a dimmer backlight, so when you're in a sunny place, you can't really see any of the lights because they're so dim, and a quieter headphones and master output than you would get on one that has its own power supply that can give more amps to this stuff. So the, the way to fix this is um, to Basically plug into a mixer that's got a gain controller on it so you can put that volume back um, if, you, if you really find it's an issue. Uh, but Or buy, buy a DJ device that plugs into mains power. So to answer your question there, yes, the DDJ 800, which has got its own power supply, will have a louder output than something like the DDJ 400 that we were looking at there. Uh, so let's grab a question now from... Facebook, this is from Kudzi, who says, should a DJ always plan his or her sets or just play what you feel at the venue or follow the crowd? Well, here is the best way, especially as a beginner, to approach that question. There's two extremes here. Extreme number one, planning every track you play. Just going through your playlist track after track after track after track after track as if there was no one in front of you, as if you don't care whether they like it or not, you're just going to play what you've planned. Extreme number two, turn up and start playing. You've got, I don't know, 200 tunes, 500 tunes, 25,000 tunes. You've got a library of music. You're just going to turn up and start playing. See what happens. They're the two extremes. Extreme number one, you're not a DJ because you're not reacting to what's going on in front of you. You are going through the motions of mixing tunes together, but you might as well record that and press play on the mix because you're not reacting to what's going on in front of you. And a DJ is there to play the right tunes for the people in front of them right now. We can't do that if you're just enacting a fixed playlist. Extreme number two, some DJs do that. Some DJs just turn up, but they're the kind of DJs that are very, 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 very experienced or extremely musically talented with a photographic memory, who know every track in their collection and don't need to do any planning at all. The best way, is to go down the middle. And as we teach in the book, which I now have to go and grab a copy of, off camera, because my camera doesn't work over there today, as we teach in the book, the best way to approach your music, which is one of the five big areas of DJing, the other four being gear, techniques, playing out and promoting yourself, they're the five areas of DJing, music, gear, techniques, playing out and promoting yourself. We actually talk about all five in the book, there's a chart right at the very beginning of our book here uh, that talks about those. Uh, as we teach in the book, the best way to program music for an event is to say, okay, how long am I, pay am I playing for? Two hours? Right. How many tunes do I normally play in two hours? Yeah, about 20, whatever, whatever it is. About 20. So you're going to want 40 tunes ready um, for uh, 20 an hour, say. So 40 tunes in two hours. So you're going to want to take double the amount of music that you normally play, 80 tunes. So now what you're going to do is go and get your music on your computer or whatever, and you're going to select 
80 tunes that you think will work well at that venue. You're going to think, what if all girls turn up? What if all boys turn up? What if they're an older crowd than I thought? What if they're a younger crowd than I thought? What if they don't actually like the music I want to play and they want to hear something different? What if they're they're not really clued up on their music and they just want to hear chart? What if they are really underground and they want to hear some stuff they haven't heard before? What if they like up front? What if they like older music? You're going to think about every possible permutation of people playing in that venue. Close your eyes and picture it and you're going to pack 80 tunes for your two hours, because remember you're gonna play 40 of them, that you think whatever happens in that venue, you can deal with using those tunes. And this forces you to think really, really hard about every one of those 80 tunes that you put into that playlist. And it's just the same as a DJ back in the day. Packing their vinyl, because you had a box or two and you had to pack your vinyl for every single eventuality in that box and you couldn't take anything more. So you better get that right. So back in the day, we used to think very hard about every piece of vinyl that went in our box and that's what I'm asking you to do because this is what happens. If you do it properly, you turn up at the venue, you open that playlist and you start looking in that playlist. What do I play next? You look at that 80 tunes. I'll play that. Now you've got 79 tunes to pick from. By halfway through the night, you're only looking at 40 tunes how quickly will you find a tune that will probably work next if you're only looking at 40 tunes? Pretty quickly. But they've been thought about and you're able to react to the people in front of you because you're not just playing by rote. You're not just playing one after the other that had all been pre-chosen. This is how you see DJs looking like they're having the time of their life, taking a quick glance at their music, finding something great to play next because they're choosing from a small amount of music they've already done their homework on. It's much better than looking at your unfiltered whole collection for every new track. So especially if you're new to playing live, that is the advice that we give in the book twice the amount of music that you need. And pretty much every DJ, every professional DJ I've ever interviewed or worked with has got their variation on that theme. So that is the best way to do it. Don't choose all your music and plan it ahead, but do do that kind of planning. Uh, and again, if you want a copy of this book, just head there, digitaldjtips.com slash join. We will give you one for free as a member of our community. Uh, and more importantly, we can send you all the good stuff we send to help you become a better DJ. Digitaldjtips.com slash join. Uh, okay, Christian, hi Phil. Do you think we'll see new controllers from the major manufacturers like Pioneer or Tractor this holidays, considering the gear shortage? Between us, um, a lot of stuff's getting delayed. A lot of stuff that should be coming out isn't coming out. So who knows? Uh, I would say I would expect nowhere near as much as would normally happen because people are trying to get their gear ready, but it's not happening at the moment. So weird time, isn't it, people? Okay. So uh, the next live question, and everyone who's, well, not everyone, but a couple of people are saying, you missed my question. I have literally hundreds of questions here, I'm afraid. So look, come back next week if we can't answer your question or ask on Facebook and we'll get to you afterwards in the comments if we possibly can. Uh, the other way to get your questions answered by us for sure, and I have to tell you this because it's a, a hidden secret of Digital DJ Tips, is to head over to our website when you're ready, of course, and grab any of our DJ courses because one of the hidden things you get when you grab one of our DJ courses is access to Digital DJ Tips' private group. And our private group is the place where we have what we call Student Live every month where we go live and we answer every single question that our students ask us, everyone, without fail uh, and without omission. Uh, so basically, you have our time in a way that I just can't give publicly because we've got hundreds and hundreds of people here in public. So if you have a question that you really need help with in your DJing, head over to Student Live inside our Student Hub private group, uh, which is a free resource to everyone who buys any of our DJ courses uh, for life. Uh, and of course, you can also just ask the question in the group and you, you, you will get help there as well. Uh, so uh, that is the, the best way to get our, our guaranteed help because we go live every week with this, but there's only so many questions I can answer live when we've got hundreds and hundreds of people on a broadcast. Uh, so my next live question, speaking of live questions from Alex, shall I update the firmware on my Tractor Control S3? I'm really loving Tractor Pro 3.5. Uh, it works on two laptops now, uh, but not at the same time. Well, you should always update the firmware on your tractor controllers. Uh, so uh, yes, simple, simple. Simple answer to that is yes, you should update the firmware. Uh, there's no reason why you, why you wouldn't do that. Uh, what's the best course 
to learn how to use Pioneer DJM 900 effects? Well, there's two types of effects on DJ equipment. Let me grab this controller here because it's the one in front of me and I'll explain to you what they are in order to answer this question. The first kind of effects are what are sometimes called the sweep effects or they're called the color effects on Pioneer DJ gear. They're controlled by the big knob underneath the EQs. These are effects that when you turn them, they do something and it's up to you how much they do the thing, depending on how much away from middle you turn it. So it could be a filter, it could be a sweep effect, a noise effect, uh, it could be an echo. Uh, and the second kind of effect are controlled by whatever the other effects system or, or, or controls are on the system. They're here, they're here. And these are more on or off. Uh, and these tend to go with the beat. So it could go wow, 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 tied to the beat of the track. And your, your controls there will let you halve or double how quickly that effect affects the beat. And there'll be different effects you can kick in. Now those effects, the kind of sweep or color effects, um, or and the, the BPM effects are the same on all DJ gear, Pioneer, Denon, Newmark, Serato, Tractor, Recordbox, everything. They all have exactly the same two types of effects. The BPM cycle effects and the sweep effects where you sweep the effect in and out of the mix depending on how much you manually turn a knob. So it doesn't matter. You know, you say to me, um, can you teach me Pioneer DJM 900 effects? It's the same as can you teach me, you know, a Rain 70 mixer effects or can you teach me tractors effects? They're all one type or the other. Uh, and so yes, we can teach them to you. And the best course for learning that is our, well to start with is our complete DJ course. Our complete DJ course is a course that not only teaches you effects, but teaches teaches you uh, all those big five areas of DJing that I was talking to you about. Uh, and within the complete DJ course, we've got three mixing um, modules. Uh, and the three mixing modules uh, comprise the first mixing module that just teaches you all the classic stuff that you can do on anything, even turntables. The second one that teaches you the theory, you know, counting and timing and all that. And the third one, which I've highlighted here, that teaches you all the features and tricks of the latest digi digital systems, which includes cues, loops, sync, and of course, effects. We go through the lot there. And by the end of that, you'll not only know what they do, but you'll know how to use them to make your music sound great. So that's the complete DJ course over on the Digital DJ Tips website. You'll find it on the courses, uh, on the courses tab at the top of the website. So that is the best course to teach you that stuff, Lee. Thank you for the question. Uh, right, I've got time for two or three more questions here. Lovely to see so many people helping out um, over on Facebook, chatting about the residency stuff. Um, and this is a very true point that Sergio makes. Uh, when you do a residency, you remember you've got to please three actors at the same time, the audience, the management, and the uh, well, not only the bar staff, but um, you know, the person who booked you, um, the management or the audience and um, the, uh, uh, yourself, I would say yourself. So that's a slightly different variation on the way we teach it. We teach it in this way. Uh, we've got a, um, in the book, we talk about how to program a DJ set and we've got a diagram that we use. I'm just trying to find the diagram now, uh, but I might not be able to live uh, on the call. I'm having a look though, I'm not giving up yet. Uh, but no, it looks like I can't. Uh, look, if you haven't got this book, by the way, do go and get get the download. It's uh, it's it's you can get an audio book, a Kindle book. It's in good bookshops. You can buy it on Amazon. But we give you the free download when you join Digital DJ Tips. Do do that. Do come and join us because uh, I want you all to have a copy of this. It's helped so many people uh, over the years, uh, and it's uh, it's still completely up to date, still still completely relevant. So go grab a copy of it. Uh, right, let's get uh, two or three final questions. Um, the first one is from Callie, and I'm not going to answer this because I'm not. <laughs> if you were a female, how would you do a female empowerment set? Uh, I'm just not qualified to answer that, Callie. Um, we have far too few female DJs on our books, and I would love to have more female DJs. I'd love to have more parity there, uh, but it's not something I feel qualified to answer. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I think equality has got no downsides. Uh, but when it comes to answering that question, I'm a bloke, unfortunately. Well, can't change it. Uh, so uh, if anyone wants to chat to Callie about that, uh, do so in the next five minutes over on uh, the chat in YouTube. Uh, because I, um, 
uh, will uh, have to warn you the YouTube chat will disappear whenever we go uh, when, when we stop the broadcast in a few minutes time uh, the best place to chat on these broadcasts is Facebook because it stays there forever on our Facebook page uh, will Pioneer DJ ever create a controller with a rotating platter says DJ Mystique honestly I don't think they will you know it's just something that they've never done and I don't see any any signs that that's something that they're going to do um, so this is a question from Dal who says, can I mix 320 kilobit per second with 240 and lower, etc." So this is all about lossy versus lossless music. So here's the thing. When you DJ, the best files for quality are going to be 320 megabits per second MP3s or 256 megabits per second A. AACs, which are the Apple equivalent, the ones you buy from the iTunes store. Either of those is going to sound pretty damn good. Uh, but when you start going lower than that, or uncompressed files, the most common of which is the WAV file or the WAV file. Um, so apart from that, you're going to start seeing drop-offs in quality when you get smaller files that have been reduced to a smaller audio or audio um, to a smaller file size, which reduces the audio quality. So um, Really, the rule that we always apply and all we always teach is always stick to uh, 320 megabits per second uh, MP3s or 256 megabit per second AACs. That said, you know, if it sounds all right to you in your headphones, nice and loud or on a club system, it's going to sound all right to everyone. If you're playing a 60, if you're playing Love Me Do by the Beatles, right, the original mono recording, frankly, that's going to sound fine as a 128 MP3 because it's so sonically limited compared to today's music that it won't matter so much uh, and so really it's just a question of um, applying some common sense if you're going to play a, a slightly smaller slightly less quality than 320 megabits per second mp3 like a 256 you'll probably get away with it uh, a lot of the time it's uh, it's other things that count more than the file format how well the track was produced how well it was mastered this is more important and of course a lot of tracks that say they're 320 megabit per second MP3s or whatever, they're nothing of the sort because they're poor YouTube rips that someone's done uh, and shared. And just because the actual file format happens to be a good format, it doesn't mean the music contained within that sounds any good. So look, you've got to trust your ears as a DJ. That said, there's an article you can find over on Digital DJ Tips, what every DJ needs to know about music file formats. Go take a look at this article. Uh, and this will help you to understand the difference between file formats uh, and how they work. And it explains our best practice about this as well. It's actually quite an old article, but nothing at all has changed since uh, this, was, uh, this was made. So um, go to music file formats, just go to Digital DJ Tips, click on that little um, magnifying glass and type music file formats in there. Click search uh, and you'll find that as the first article. Uh, and there's a few things we've written over the years about this as well. So you'll find lots and lots of chat. Uh, and uh, here we go, there's another one that looks good. Seven truths about digital music quality for DJs. This looks like a cool article from a few years back, but uh, as I say, much of this stuff hasn't changed. Uh, this looks like a great article actually. So that's the way to find this and all the other stuff. I forget what we've done. We've written about 5,000 articles over the years. It's absolutely incredible the amount of stuff on the website. Uh, so, hey, I've given you a little hack there. Use that magnifying glass in the top corner on our website because you'll find all kinds of stuff that even I rediscover when I go on there and start typing. Guys and girls, I've got to go now. Uh, I said I'd tell you uh, at the end about a special, um, a special thing that's going on at Digital DJ Tips at the moment. I actually revealed what it was uh, a little bit earlier on as well. But basically, uh, we have got our best-selling course from James Hype, one of the most exciting and creative DJs in the world today. Uh, James is about to go on a US tour, so if you're in the US, you can get to see him over there uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, but James has also added to the James Hype Mixing Skills course with new lessons. He has taken his summer smash viral hit routines, Roses versus um, Chill Robert Miles' Children and uh, Ed Sheeran's uh, latest, uh, whatever it's called, what's it called? Bad Habits, of course, Bad Habits, Acapella uh, and uh, Insomnia by Faithless. He's mashed them up, turned them into some really exciting uh, live breakdown and build up type DJ routines. Uh, and they've gone absolutely mental on a, on a, on, on, on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Five million plus views in the last uh, few weeks for those two new routines. James is the king 
of uh, this kind of stuff. And he teaches those routines in the new improved James Hype's Mixing Skills course. So get the course, head over to there, djtips.co slash hype. It's $100 off as well at the moment. Uh, and learn how to do it. He doesn't only teach his stuff though, he teaches about how he thinks about music, how he gets his music, how he uh, prepares his sets, um, how he prepares his tracks. Uh, and then he talks you through very basic DJ techniques through to intermediate, through to advanced, and then teaches his routines. So this works on controllers, and it also works if you're a beginner DJ controller. Indeed, most of the DJs taking this course are controller DJs. So don't think you can't do it because James uses Pro Gear. Far from it, it's been designed for everyone. Right. I gotta go now, folks. I'm back again uh, on Sunday for the final ever Balcony Beats live stream from me. So join me at exactly this time. Look at your watch now, exactly this time on Sunday. Uh, we will be playing our final live stream live from my balcony here in Gibraltar. So come and join me for that. We'll have a bit of a party and a celebration of 18 months of going live every fortnight with a, a lockdown DJ set, but lockdown's lifted now. So uh, it seems like the right time to, uh, to stop and, and move on and do something else. So come and join me for that. But next week as well, Tuesday and Thursday, 4 p.m. London, uh, sorry, 3 p.m. London, 10 a.m. Eastern uh, for our, uh, our educational shows. And we'll try and get the cameras mended by next week uh, as well. OK, so that's it for me. Get good. Get out there. Make the moments, people. I'll see you again very soon. Thank you very much for commenting today. And we will continue to answer all your comments on the YouTube. Uh, sorry, on the Facebook version of this when it goes uh, goes live as a recording. We will then uh, we will then keep an eye on the comments underneath that and try and help you out. So until next time, bye bye.